Hello there ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is NDM here, welcoming you back to another episode of Let's Play Earthbound. Alright, so in the last episode we pretty much did a bunch of grinding and got all our equipment ready for the game arcade. I got myself up to level 7 off screen just now. So we're pretty much efficiently strong enough to be able to take down these guys inside here. We've also got a boss to take down as well, and with the sharks we can... There are some sharks that we can kill in one hit now, we're that powerful, we can take take them down in one hit. And I don't mean an automatic win, by the way, I mean like in battle we can kill them in one hit. So, this shouldn't, this shouldn't be really too bad, this should be like a walk in the park, really. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> and they only, do, they only do like 6 damage on you now, um, and that's with their strongest attack, so... They are mere mutants and weaklings, and they will be destroyed, and anyone who dares comes in my path will feel the wrath of Ness. And this game arcade, and one of these game machines look like Donkey Kong. I think it's the one where that, where the shark on the left is playing. Yeah, on the bottom left he's playing Donkey Kong. I don't know what all these other games are though. One of them looks like Pac-Man. Um... And the others just look like standard Pong machines, or pinball machines, not Pong machines. There's a, there's a really crappy Sonic game called Sonic Spinball, I think it's called. And it's like one of the worst Sonic games on the Mega Drive. I, like, everyone says that Sonic 3D Blast is a really bad Sonic game. I don't think it is. I think it's a lot better than what people say it is. To tell you the truth, I like drinking tea and eating vegetables, but that doesn't fit my super cool image. I guess I just have to accept this about myself. Yeah, I guess. It's a tough life, I know, but still. <laughs> spit, spit, saliva, spit, spit. Do you want some gum? Get your own twit. Dude, you got some spit on my face. That's disgusting. Ew. <laughs> well, basically what you're supposed to do, you don't have to actually battle all those sharks up there, but the main guy you want to talk to is this guy who's standing in front of the door. Hey kid, do you want to become a member? And you're supposed to say yes here. Oh no, you're supposed to say no. Oh, okay. Yeah, say no. Don't be such a stomp. <laughs> well, excuse me, princess. But I need to speak to your boss. And take down your rebel alliance in taking over game arcades and things and such. Yeah, this is a pretty dangerous organization you got going on here. You got the Onet police on your ass. So we just need to get you out of town so that people can wander around the streets freely without being harassed by you. Alright, so I guess this is your main honcho, henchman, whatever, leader. <laughs> I'm Frank. You are. Come on, can't you at least say your name? My name is. Wait for it. Bob Saget! <laughs> Alright, so yeah, this guy can be pretty powerful, he does some really nasty attacks, like when he brandishes his knife, that does a lot of damage, I think it, if you're like level 5, it does 50 HP damage, and that's pretty brutal, it can kill you in one hit, so you gotta be careful, and make sure that you have the right items on you as well, like the cheap bracelet and Mr. Baseball hat, and you should be alright to get through this battle anyway, and make sure you have a lot of PP and healing items to back yourself up, because that is one of the key important things, and I think I'm going to die here because I'm on 16 HP and he seems to deal like 20 damage for every attack he does. Oh, thank god he didn't brandish his knife, otherwise I'd have been dead. Frank said something nasty, oh no my guts went down, whatever am I going to do, oh no I'm so scared. Frank just died anyway so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got 50 XP from that, that's decent. Fail proof Frank can't be beaten. Puff, puff, puff. And this is Frankenstein Mark II. Was this supposed to be your brother or something? Or your clone? It doesn't even look anything like you. It looks like Pinocchio. I mean, look at that nose. It's got a really pointy nose. And it feels like if you lie to it, its, it's nose is just going to extend outwards. Imagine if you lie to Pinocchio so many times that his nose went all the way around the world. <laughs> like, you said so many lies to Pinocchio, it just went right around the surface of the planet. That'd be kind of cool. And weird. At the same time. 
Did, did we literally just kill it with a critical? Oh my god! Wow! That battle went a lot faster than what I expected it to be, because usually that battle is actually a well drawn out fight, and that's quite, you know, quite hard to get through, but... Oh well, that critical hit saved us. This is my defeat. Failproof Frank is now just failure Frank. I know you've been asking it around, so I'll tell you about Giant Stead. It seems to be quite a powerful spot. Some kind of special power is stored there that allows certain people to perform wondrous feats. However, a monster sucked up all the energy at that spot. It's difficult to get to Giant Step. That's all I know. I suggest you collect more information on your own. The entrance to the path leading to Giant Step is behind the Touring Entertainer's Shack. Burkle, the mayor of Onnit, has a key to the shack. Shulk, you've, come, you've become stronger than I. Your adventure is just beginning. Right, so he's given us the get-go to meet up with the mayor and hopefully he'll give us the key. Yeah? So what? I kicked, you, I kicked your whole organization's ass. You should bow down to me and give me all the candy in the world. And also give me some of them game arcade tickets, if you have any, so I can play some Donkey Kong. Yeah, boy. Alright, so now that all that's done, we have to go to the town hall and have the mayor's consent into going into Giant Step. He will then give us the key, and we will be on our way to our first dungeon of the game, technically. And it is a pretty... It, like, there are some enemies in there that can get quite annoying, but overall it's not that bad. The monsters in there aren't going to be that powerful. I will do some grinding in there, though, to get to at least level 10, because I'll need to get to level 10 in order to beat the boss. Spit in their eyes and made them wet their pants. Then you force them to promise not to make any more trouble. Thank you. What? You want a key to the touring entertainer's shack? For some, for someone as great as you, giving you the tick, giving you the key, could help keep the town peaceful. However, if you encounter a dangerous situation, please don't ask me to take any responsibility. I'll be able to avoid avoid any responsibility, right? Well, sure, I guess I won't mention anything. <laughs> You're such a smart kid. Here's the key to the entertainer's shack. It's just because I'm such a nice, lovely, lovely person. Shulk got the key to the entertainment shack. Right, cool. So I guess we're on our way to the shack. Where we where we shall encounter um, meth heads and, and cocaine addicted monkeys. That will probably kick our ass into next year, but still. It's, uh, it's our destiny. We have to go over there whether we like it or not. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to make a stop off at home so I can get all healed up. I don't think I used any PP in that f in those two fights, though, so it's just health that I really need to regain here. Um, we got plenty of burgers on us, so we don't need to go to the burger parlor and order some more burgers. Otherwise, we're just going to end up a beast and die of a heart attack before we even get to the first Sanctuary boss. So, <laughs> that wouldn't be a very smart idea, I don't think. But anyway, Mum, give me some weed. I need to go to bed and get some sleep and re recover my health and such. I'm going to take a nice swig of my LucasAid here. Yeah, my microphone is like being really weird at the moment. It's bending downwards instead of going right near my mouth, so I don't know how well that's picking up my sound. I hope that's picking it up okay. It should do. I mean, it's not like it's so far away from my mouth that I wouldn't be able to pick up any sound that I'm projecting from my voice. Hang on, let me just adjust it. I don't know. It's being weird. Why, microphone? Why must you do this to me? Ah, uh, that's fine. The way it is at the moment. Uh, keep it like that. You know what? This, I've had this headset for about three years now. Well, I've had it since I... Like I think it was halfway through Ocarina of Time I got this headset and it's staying with, it stayed with me all this time and it hasn't really done me any wrong. It's been a very good headset. I haven't broke it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's been stable for three years because usually you get a good four years out of a headset. Maybe even maybe it's slightly longer than that. But yeah, this headset's been doing me good, and it's, be it's a lot better than the built-in microphone, I can assure you on that one. It's so much better than the built-in microphone. Alright, so I, I, I think if you use the key on the shack, and then you speak to one of the guys, you can get a travel charm from one of them. 
Which I think it's useful in some way, but I don't think it's useful in boosting your defense, though. Because I don't think it changes that. So, yeah, it doesn't change it. I don't know what it actually does, but... I might as well just put it on you just for the sake of it. Alright, so I'm going to end off the episode when I get into this cave, and we shall continue on the next episode of Earthbound in the next episode. So in the next episode of Let's Play Earthbound, we shall be making a start on the first dungeon, Giant Step, in order to get to the first sanctuary and record our first sound to the soundstone. So until then, this is NDM saying thanks for watching, take care everybody, see you on the next video, and goodbye.